and gentlemen. Last month in Delhi, I met a beautiful little girl called Manisha. Manisha is eight years old. She's HIV positive and she has a TB co-infection. Manisha nearly died because she had no access to medication. Today, she's on treatment thanks to Operation Asha, a small organization that offers supportive services to TB and HIV patients. Operation Asha was founded by a very talkative Indian doctor called Shirley. Shirley took action because she realized there was a huge undiscovered need for treatment and support among young people with HIV and TB in New Delhi. Community mobilization has always been at the heart of the HIV response. Many of the hard-won gains in the 30-year history of HIV are a result of people on the ground, like Shirley and many, many others, taking action in the face of adversity. The history of HIV is also a history of a people's movement. From the beginning, ordinary people with extraordinary wealth and power have occupied the core of our movement, propelling us forward. Civil society, user and peer groups, together with dedicated service organizations and activists, have expressed impatience and demanded action. This week, people have marched here in Washington, D.C., demanding world leaders to fulfill their promise to end AIDS. In New Delhi, people have hit the streets to demand treatment and prevention. In South Africa, they're calling for gender equity. In Russia, advocates are working on harm reduction for people who use drugs. In every corner of the earth, people are advocating and want fulfillment of their human rights to basic health care. The Red Ribbon Award rightly honors community-based organizations who lead our response. These organizations have the courage to find the injustices that fuel HIV and to provide critical health services when governments fail. Still, there is a limit to what drugs, services, structures and professions can do, and that is matched by people that understand what HIV means in their community, what it takes to stop transmission, to test and to be treated, and what the roots are to vulnerability, stigma and discrimination. All of these organizations work on tiny budgets under incredibly difficult circumstances, including fear of arrest, violence, or worse. The Red Ribbon Award cuts across all the red tape, the bureaucracies, and international territories, all the conflicting priorities in global discussions. It honors action, it honors action on the ground. Last month in Norway, I was very happy and fortunate to celebrate the 25th anniversary of ACCEPT, the Norwegian Community Centre for People Living with HIV. It's a very special work uh, place where I have worked as a volunteer. And every time I come there, I'm reminded of the importance of community engagement. People who are affected directly is our most important resource in the AIDS response, because they are the ones who know what it's all about. Therefore, ACCEPT is not only a safe haven where people experience understanding, belonging, and inclusion. It's also an important research when Norway is shaping its HIV policies. But most of all, ACCEPT is a place where people can be free of stigma and discrimination in their everyday lives. One of my friends there expressed it this way. Sometimes I feel like I'm regarded just as the one who's HIV positive. I'd accept I'm allowed to be myself, the whole me. Through our 30 years history of AIDS, powerful activists, men and women, have been on the barricades. They have done an incredible job, which we benefit from today, and 
will continue to benefit from in the future. Fortunately, today a new generation is ready to take leadership. It's my firm belief that young people must be in the center of the next step of the action for change. Young people must be recognized and given space, and they are more than ready to take responsibility. Here at the International AIDS Conference, we are privileged to be in the midst of an incredible meeting of activists, scientists, programmers, and decision makers. But we also recognize the many young people who are not able to participate in this event. Young people who are working every day in their local communities to create a more equitable world. Every day, 3,000 young people are infected with HIV. The number is devastating when we reflect upon it. Young women aged 15 to 24 are twice as likely to become infected as young men. Violence and threat of violence hampers the ability of young women and adults to make smart decisions and protect themselves from HIV infection. At a community centre in Nicaragua some years ago, I met um, an 18 year old mother, Manuela. Manuela was involved in HIV related community work because she herself had been affected through rape. Her main motivation was to prevent her little baby daughter and other girls in the next generation from experiencing what she had been through when they grew up. This, to me, is leadership at its core. But the reason we need young people like Manuela in response is not only because she has shown extraordinary leadership, it's because HIV is everybody's business. We need Manuela to tell us what made her vulnerable. We, I think we often underestimate the fact that it's not young people who need us. We need them. We need their experience. We need the capacity and insight of young people in a particular way because young people use clear language and young people are informed. Young people have the capacity and the tools to connect the dots and help us face reality. Young people get incredibly much done with very, very limited means. Young people, influential power is growing because of global networks and social media. Young people advocate for resources, action, and accountability, not just as a global movement, but in every country. Young people are ready to challenge the silos and taboos that still surround HIV in our families and our communities. Global Youth Coalition Gaika in Egypt is a leading example of this work. This is why I believe young people should get more space for leadership, more public attention, and more substantial funding. They have proved their ability to deliver. Now, we need to do the same. As a UNA special representative, I am very happy to see the UN system is currently in the process of transforming the way they are working with and involving youth, and I would like to give a little applause to, to Michelle for his incredible work in this year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, every movement starts at the grassroots. The Red Ribbon Award honors those who deserve to be honored the most. The impact of organizations mobilizing in people in communities always defies our expectations. Every person who is reached with HIV education or accompanied to see a doctor so they feel safe to access medical care or supported to have a healthy pregnancy makes a difference. Every time a young person living with HIV speaks out against stigma and discrimination, our world improves. Every time when people most affected by HIV, women, people who use drugs, sex workers, men who have sex with men, and transgender people demand to be included, the HIV response grows stronger and more effective. We celebrate you and are inspired by you. Ability and commitment to make a difference. When I think about Manisha in New Delhi, I am confident that she is alive thanks to people like you. 
Today we honor those who bring hope to Manisha and other people of all ages in a similar situation. The Indian writer Arundhati Roy said, another world is not only possible, she is on her way. On a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. Today, we honor those who are creating our world.